So hey there, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that video intro. If you can't tell, we did go out to a client job site on location to actually do some data gathering for not only what we're doing here um, on this class series about web ODM, but also tracking one of my client locations. So before we get started into this, I will let you know that you could be viewing this on YouTube or you could be viewing this over on my Teachable account. I am making a full class series on web ODM and I'm sharing some of the snippets of that class series here on YouTube as well. So one location or another location, I hope you're enjoying this. Also to let you know, for YouTube, this is the third installment of our Web ODM series. If you haven't checked out the first two, in the upper right-hand corner, there's an info button where you can go watch videos number one and two. So in the case of this site visit, if you've checked out some of our other videos, you've probably seen this site location already. But if you didn't notice at, at the beginning when we were taking a look at that video, checking out the location, I had some ground control targets for doing some ground control points, and that'll be coming up in a later lesson in the Teachable class. So keep your eyes open. We'll be letting subscribers here know when that Teachable class is available. So we did go out with a couple of purposes, to visit a few uh, job sites and to also make some, uh, make some tutorial videos here for you on channel. So there you go. Now, with all that said, we're going to talk about, so what was used while we were on location? Well, I utilized an iPhone 8 using MapPilot Pro. So MapPilot Pro was our autonomous software gathering our images. After the images were gathered, we moved on to another location, of course, after picking up our ground control targets. So we did spend some time there doing that. And that'll be in a later video from us as well, setting up ground targets and ground control points with Web ODM. All right, let's take a look on screen now, shall we here? So I'm just flipping screens for you really quick. And what you're looking at now is our web ODM interface. And on the interface, on the top, on the uh, top project, we have High Lonesome, and that's the location that we have visited um, for this particular flight. So we'll still show you a little bit of the setup, but we've also shown how to set up in previous videos as well. So for you YouTube folks who are watching this, once again, go to our playlist on WebODM and check out the first two videos. So we did manage to get, let's take a look here. Um, I think it was 110 images that we were going to be using. So these are all the images that are going into this particular model. And uh, we will not be using image number one because it's actually an image of my helipad. So there you go. All right, we'll close that one down. So we do have 110 images in total for this particular model. And we didn't do any high-end tasks with WebODM. We used one of their pre-canned default settings for running this particular model. So taking a look at the high lonesome default, we have 110 images. And the processing time on that 110 images was 18 minutes and 31 seconds. Nice and speedy. And it does give us a decent ortho mosaic result. Now, depending on the settings that we use, um, we can have higher end ortho models or higher end 3D models. And the higher end we go, the more rendering time it's going to take, of course. So taking a look at this task, let's take a look really quickly. And we set auto boundary to true. So that means that um, on our ortho mosaics, we don't have jagged edges. It kind of smooths things out for us. Um, we have digital surface model is true. So we generated a digital surface model. Point cloud quality was set to high. Digital elevation model resolution set to 2.0. And ortho photo resolution set to 2.0. Once again, this is from a canned setup provided by Web ODM. Now, when we were done generating this, we got our ortho model. Uh, a surface model, point cloud, our textured model, camera parameters, our camera shots, a quality report, and we can download all of those assets for sharing with our clients or for doing videos like this. I'm going to take a look at the map. Now, remember, keep in mind that we were um, using the ground control points as well. So one of the things I want to make sure of is that the targets are visible. So I'm looking at the ortho version of this and we also have a plant health version and the surface model version, which gives us those cool shaded areas 
to show high points versus low points. But I'm going to go back to that ortho photo. And just so you know, we don't have to have the base maps on. So we can just, in fact, look at our model only if we want to. Or we can put those base maps on to see how well things aligned. In the case of this one, our alignment was a little bit off, which is not surprising. Um, we haven't run ground control points or anything on this yet. So it's not surprising that uh, things aren't seaming up perfectly. And the ground control points are for a later video because they're going to take a little time. We actually had a meeting with our Patreon group uh, recently, and I talked through some of the ground control points. And as one of the guys said, there's a good bit of information there. And he has let me know it's going right over his head. So we'll be doing a longer installment on those ground control points. Just so that you can see, however, uh, right down in here, we do have one of those surface targets, and that's zero. And so we set it and we captured the GPS location elevation. And we'll talk about that down the road as well, because if you're not using an accurate mapping or survey grade GPS, then your ground control points aren't going to help you too much. So I just wanted to share that one with you. Here's the second ground control point, number one. And we laid out some more as we're moving along in here. There's number two, uh, three and four are out here. And those will be used in a later video. So the biggest part for me out on this job site was getting those ground control points captured and running an updated ortho mosaic for my clients because we visited this site two times prior. They're putting up new markers on this location, so um, you can make out some of the markers in here. And actually, on a higher resolution version, uh, we'll get those markers better because they're just marking out the area where the actual building is going to be going. So our client got in touch with us and let us know, hey, could you go back and refly that um, before all those markers get done and then once the markers get done. So that was the primary goal of this particular site visit. So very simple and very easy flight. And once the flight was completed, we came back to the home office. I did work with this a little bit previously. And I just want to pull these tasks down again here. As you can see, I do have other models in here that we'll also be talking about in the class series. But we could delete this fully, but let's say that you wanted to see how this was done from scratch. I'm going to do an add a project, and we're going to call this my lonesome live render. So I'm just giving it that name so that uh, it'll remind me of what I was doing here. I'm going to hit create a project, and now we've got my lonesome live render. Over on the right hand side, I've got my select images and GCPs. So I had already gotten this ready for you uh, this morning for this video. Um, and what we've got here are images that we recently shot at High Lonesome. And we're going to scroll down till we get to that last one there. There we go. So 110 images. I'm going to say open to that now. So I've selected my images. If I'd had a ground control point um, list, it could have been brought in here as well. So we could select our images and our GCP file. Once again, GCPs are a topic for another time. Now, over here in the main window area for setting this up, you'll see that there's a selection of high resolution. You could also go with a selection of default. So these are the pre-canned uh, options from WebODM. So you can actually tweak these more, as I've showed in a previous video in the Teachable series. Under the edit here, we have a lot of processes that we can tweak ourselves. And this is going to involve some reading and learning about what each of these is. So I'm repeating what I've said earlier in the class, but it's a good thing to drive these points home is the fact that it's going to take a while for you to understand all of the task options available to you. In the meantime, just for playing with smaller models or testing models, we can always use these canned setups. So we can do a default. We could do a fast ortho mosaic, digital surface model, and digital terrain model. Um, we could set it to a forested setting. Uh, point of interest, buildings, 3D models. You get the idea. We did do another one for 3D models while we were out that day as well. We can also resize the images. Now, I do resize the images because the size of the images coming out of the drone is they're massive. They're very large files. So I've had people ask me, why do you resize things? 
the processing time will be sped along more. If you need the super high quality, high end um, ortho mosaic or 3D model, maybe you don't resize the images. Maybe you do some of the higher quality settings when you're setting up your web ODM process. That's fine. The higher end we go, the longer the processing time is going to take, but the better the results we're going to get. So in the case of this one, I can select default here. Let's say, you know, the aspect ratio of my drone, it's a three by two uh, is what it comes out to. So we could do 3000 pixels by 2000 pixels. So I could resize this to 3000 instead, or I could resize it to 1500 by 1000 if I wanted to. One of the big things I need to stress here, you need to experiment with this. Um, me showing you through every one of these buttons isn't going to help you learn in the long term. You've actually got to try some of these settings out for, for your own information, for your own practice. So that is a big one here is that just dragging you through every one of these settings is not going to teach you about the settings. So you need to try the settings and see how they affect the models. And if you do uh, resize your images, you can run these models quicker to see, you know, what the results are after we've toyed with these. But let's set this to default. Let's pretend we're ready to go over on the right side. I'm going to go to review. And now it's telling me, so here's the options selected with that default. We've got an auto boundary set to true, so that's going to trim up our ortho very nicely. And we've got a digital surface model set to true so that we can get that colorized shaded area as well. So those are the major processes that this is going to do. And right now I can't click in here anymore because I'm ready to start the process. I can hit cancel here and we could go back and change this to 1500. Now I am not going to rerun this model for you because it's not going to look a whole heck of a lot different from the high lonesome model that we just showed you. So there you have it. We went out in the field, we did our capture, we took the images that we captured from high lonesome and we processed those captures. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel here. Um, we process those captures in web ODM, and that's the high lonesome default that we just took a look at. So in very quick order, we went from a site visit to processing to be, being able to look at our model and utilize the model and export the model if we need to. In the next video that's coming up in the series, so this is not going to be seen on YouTube, uh, in the next video, it's part of the Teachable series, we're going to take a look at one of the 3D models generated on the same day of another client location of a home that's almost completed. And it's the first time we actually did an orbit around this home to do a 3D model. So we did a grid pattern and an orbit around the home to do the 3D model. And we'll be looking at that in the next lecture in the Teachable series. For those of you on YouTube, I will be putting out an announcement when the full class series is available um, to our subscribers here. In the meantime, we're still tutorial building right now. So we get to mix this class series with the YouTube playlist as well. So hopefully this will get you a little excited about checking out the full series down the road. All right, everybody, thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you again in the next one.